And welcome back. I get done. Uh, this this has been a while in the making. Uh, nearly six months. <laughs> but, oh uh, man, we're happy to have you, Martin. So I'm, I'm I'm glad to finally get it. You got a nice little Discord group there going, lads. A good crowd here in it. It's the best there is for your one. Yeah. But um, good, good boys. For anyone who might not know you, Martin, how about you introduce yourself? Well, I'm Mark Maloney, also known as Eddie Durkin from Cult Smash comedy show Hardy Books that uh, yeah came to fame in 2009 on the internet and then you know RTE did a movie with Universal and then yeah Netflix which was a nice little booster to the morale mm. a little bit of a, a reaffirmation of us boys did all right yeah I didn't know about the show until I seen a Netflix version but uh you know the pandemic I, I guess in a way it aided this because I guess like a lot more people are Watching the Hardy books as a result. They're yeah. Sitting around doing nothing. Like, like those poor lads in uh, the poor couple in Scotland, in Glasgow. Oh, my, yeah. the, uh, cops burst in because they were watching the Hardy books on Netflix. Yeah. Feel your air cords. Poor bastards. Four of them in there watching the Hardy books and the, the guards burst in. Yeah, it reminds me of the time me and Owen, Owen Colgan used to, we used to live in Spanish Parade in Galway. And we were staying with these Polish head cases, a lad called Ramik. And Camille, Gregory, and uh, a couple of other fucking headers. And uh, one of them, oh, like one night, one Sunday night, me and Owen were trying to sleep. We had to be up for work in the morning. And all we could hear was, ah, ah, ah. And I was like, I've got to go into them and say something, man. This is just ridiculous. So uh, I, I, I barged into the room to tell them to, what? I was like, what the fuck he's doing, man? It was like, Sound like someone's being slaughtered in the next room, <laughs> <laughs> and, and the lights are off, and there's about fucking twelve of them huddled around a tiny, you know, those micro laptops that were out in the in the late noughties. and uh, I, and like they had this like probably a seven inch LCD screen hooked up to a Dolby surround system, and I went, "What the fuck's going on in here, man?" And they're like. This lad, Ramek, who's a cheeky little fucker, he's like, we are watching Hostel Part 2. Sweet dreams. I was like, turn it down, man, you fucking wrong uh, good, good, good dudes, good blokes, good blokes. I played to them. That's a bit of an odd, odd story, in fairness. Yeah, fucking hell, man. You know, I'm the man of, 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 long, of odd stories. Man of yeah, odd stories. Yeah, you, you have a podcast yourself, and I've listened to it a fair bit. Um, What's the name of that podcast? Sorry, your one, What's What's like the, the Hardy Books podcast or something. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah it's good, isn't it? <laughs> Thomas, what you do? You, your your computer is revving like it, like an engine over there. Is it? Salah's Sal, Sal, computer was made in Roswell. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, a bit of a weird one going down there. Um, yeah, change my mic or something now. That this that any better? Oh, to, yeah. Well, they, they can see the pictures, but um, you know, you have a couple of odd stories. I've listened to the podcast. Some, some fairly funny ones. Um, especially love the interview ones that you do. Um, yeah. yeah, there's nothing better than you know two lads, two white lads having a chat about God knows what. Exactly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm a white boy. What, what 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 made you want to do the Hardy books? Like, how, how did it all begin? Oh, this old question. <laughs> yeah, you get it a million uh, times. So yeah, uh, yeah, just a bit of crack, man. Myself and myself and Tordoff. Tordoff went off to college. I went off to college in Ballyfermot and then I was supposed to go back and do television and film or um, I was supposed to do fucking THND in, in media, TV. And uh, I ended up going off to... Inter I, went, I went off um, back to Greece because I went into Israel when I was 19. When I came back... Uh, when, I, when I was over in Greece, I was hanging out with a bunch of headers who were involved. My mate Sasha was involved with uh, Charity Saving Street Cats and Dogs Over in Greece. So uh, we were home then and he said to me in September, he goes, oh, am I? What are you doing in September? I was like, I don't know. I might just go back to college and do TV. And he's like, do you want to go to Sweden? And I was like, ooh, all right, yeah. So then I went to Sweden and didn't go to college then. Uh, but I, I fucking good crack, man. I good crack. And then a couple of years later, yeah, I went to end up with a Swedish girl for two years and moved back to Ireland. And I went to New York for a couple of months to try and make it in TV over there. My mate Justin Masler, but he ended up being, being a bit cuckoo cachoo in the La Bonza, uh, and nothing really happened over there. Good crack. Came back, worked in Liverpool for about six months, and then 
back to Ireland, worked in Galway, and then so I was just on the fucking building sites so of Colgan and and uh, Tom. Tom Cagallan plays the boo, and one Sunday evening I was coming back, and t- and uh, Toloff goes, "Hey Martin, do you want to do a few characters in front of the camera?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." So I did this kind of a mix of bits of me dad and bits of lads I went to school with, and then he did that as a little kind of project for college for Ballyferma and then next thing a load of his mates came down from college we did a demo we did another demo it's about a year before that came out and then when that eventually was released on YouTube everyone was like oh my god have you seen these fucking headers and yeah it was just back in the day where was, I was just I just I just like inboxed everyone I was like you, you check this out and people I didn't really speak to I was like yeah watch this you'll like it and most people did and uh, Simon Keenan who was our cameraman for many years uh, he got onto this thing. He was working for Podge and Rodge, and one of those guys had said that there was a competition called Storyland on RTE. We went, we we got into. I think it was over three hundred applicants. We got into the top twenty. Then we went for a pitching session, got into the top ten, and then we won the thing. And then from then we we did uh did you know a couple of series and film and the rest is uh is history as they say in the fucking states. Yeah, and there's there's a lot of there's a lot of hype for another season to come out, but uh. It's been some it's obstacles in the way. There is. Yeah, it gets unreal hype for it. Um, it's, it's what the country needs. Actually, there's, uh, there's, a, there's a petition, like last night on the live stream. I think uh, Seanine from Chicago, he uh, he made a petition. He was like, get this petition to 100. I was like, Jesus, that's not really going to do much. We're supposed to go into RTE, man. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think it's reached 100 already. But... Uh, I'll give you the link. So if you want to get, yeah, we'll get great if you got hundred, hundred, imagine you've got hundred thousand signatures. Went into our team, like, look, there's an appetite for a there, isn't there? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, we we're talking to was it yeah. French Toast who said there's a load of like unseen footage still stored at RT. Yeah, it's like a funeral for uh, a cowboy or something like that. What? Load of oh yeah, yeah. I don't think. I, I mean, I don't know if RT have those rushes. Maybe they do. They have them on a hard drive somewhere, but. Uh, I think Chris and Mike have all of the. They probably have it on like a G Raid hard drive somewhere. Uh, yeah, there's man, there's loads of rushes. But at the end of the day, you, you've you've you know each episode could essentially be made into a mini feature or, or definitely forty five minutes. But uh, for for TV, you just got to you got to cram as much into twenty four minutes as possible. And there's unfortunately a lot of stuff left on the cutting room floor, mm-hmm. uh, as is as is the case with a lot of things. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. What, what was it? French French was told is like. When, when he's finally got involved with RT, he said they were crack Nazis. If there's crack any Nazis. crack we had, that they kind of got got rid of it. Um, you know, I mean, in fairness, you got to dance with the girls in the barn. And uh, if you, if you know, look, there, there, there's ways. I know for a fact, if if we were just given the money and they said, "All right, lads, go and make it," it would have been spellbinding. But I think, considering the rest- restraints we had, um, we we got away with doing as much as we could. But uh, yeah, I, I, you know, it is what it is. You know, it's their money at the end of the day, and it's uh, there's always going to be a kind of a conflict between executives and and uh, creators. It's, it's, yeah. it's as old as the, unless, unless you're basically unless you're self sufficient, you can do all that yourself. Then you know, I think Louis C.K. got to that point, but sure, Louis C.K. man, that lad's fucking he's wanking at people. Do you know what I mean? And he's got a lot of money. Yeah, um, fair play if you can do it yourself, but. It's not for the amateur Shmo. And um, he's, in all fairness, he's all since kind of grown up. He's, oh, he's big, aren't the, the 20 year old with one camera now. No, it's. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's high time to do another series. I think I think just like the characters have grown up. You know I mean, you've got to, they've got to move the times. They're still mad pricks, but like, they're, you know, they're doing stuff like going to parent teacher meetings and. You know, and that would be fucking hilarious. Yeah, it's the same awkward situations, like, but just just the same kind of crack that the you know, older lads would be at, you know, because it's mm. kind of you can't be going like, yeah, we're gonna have another form party, man. You know, it's it, it was of its time, but man, it's still so. I mean, there's more, there's more room for nuance and scope now going 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 forward, like. And going forward, with it, is there any possibility of doing it without RT, or do you kind of need them? I mean, there is, of course. Like, do you know, I mean, we don't need RTE, but it's just basically who has, who has a handy half a mil to, to give to give us. I mean, look, you, you could, there's a lot of money. Let's say when you, when you're working with, with with national broadcasters and whatnot, obviously, you know, 
some of the incentive of that is is to employ people who work in the unions and they want it a certain way. But to be quite honest with you, I mean, like, I reckon we could probably do it on, especially if Tordoff was back on back on board. You definitely, you definitely get something going for fucking half the price at least, man. So like, you know, we we did the like the. the the episodes that got us moving in the beginning, like that was just a load of stuff hired from, but you know, they're, they're obviously like five minute, 10 minute, seven minute um, vignettes. Mm. But like, yeah, man, you can do anything. Like, especially nowadays, like back in the day, you'd, you know, pre digital, you used to have to, you used to have to, you know, store film safely. You'd have to develop it. And then the editing process would be, would be done on like a physically cutting film. Like now, nowadays you can pretty much, you have phones that, that are all pretty much broadcast quality. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if it's, if it's graded and rent, uh, you know, in post-production, you can, you can make it look good. Carl Zeiss and the boys. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah. What, what was it one that said? Like, the, one of the biggest regrets is, like, not letting the... Or not continue with the YouTube channel because, you know, he's, he's could have got that a fair bit bigger. Yeah, you know, it's... It was a shame that we neglected the YouTube channel. I always said to keep it going, but I think I think Tordoff had the key to it and then either forgot the password or just defunct it, really, you know? Um, but, you know, as Jim Morrison said, some of the biggest mistakes he ever made in life were haircuts. Yeah. Uh, I could second fairness, that like, one. <laughs> in fairness, Tordoff's a really hard man to, to nail down for anyone. You yeah, know, he, he, he's almost like an element now. He's like he's like a gas. Do you know what I mean? He's he's he's, he's it's almost like like the you know. Like, did you ever watch the Lawnmower Man with Pierce Brosnan, where uh, the Lawnmower Man is basically you know he's it's a rather simple man who does the lawns and Pierce Brosnan was like, yes, Billy, we're gonna hook him up to my new psychological adaptation cyber machine, which is basically a wetsuit attached to a neon gyroscope and. You know, after a few sessions on the on the uh, on the old gyroscope, the lawnmower man had, had merged with the uh, with the fabric of cyberspace and was was uh, omnipotent. Then, so maybe maybe he's just kind of merged as as the lawnmower man and just knocks about on the internet in, in some sort of elemental form these days. But I ain't seen him for about three years, man. I, I don't know what he what is that. I wish him all the very best. Like, I, and I, I do miss him. I think he's one of the he's one of the funniest dudes i've ever known in my whole life and i and you know he's he's he'll always be like a younger brother figure to me you know mm. i've I known him since he was 11 and myself and himself have, have you know we'd, we'd gone we've done many things throughout the years and yeah i personally miss him you know as a mate uh more, you know i also as a co-creator because for me you know i trust my life in his comedy hands he's got a great he's got an absolutely divine eye for detail and he he gets me you know i get him too so like as a as a as a, as a team um yeah we, we could you know if, if we'd stuck it out man we could have we could have could have been pumping shit out in hollywood taking on danny mcbride and will farrell and the boys but uh i don't know if I, I don't think he's into like for me he had like i had aspirations to, to hit the big time Whereas I think he's just happy enough just doing things from his bedroom, and you know that I think the two of us had kind of different mm. different versions of what we wanted. Really, he was a, he, he's a bit kind of Aspergic, and I'm ADHD, so I, you know, two different personality types there. Mm. Yeah, he, he's really into the streaming at the moment, like and they do really they well do streaming. really well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, man, he's always been. He was one of those fucking boys who had a computer growing up. Do you know what I mean? He was, he was, uh, he, 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 yeah, he knows shortcuts on the keypad and everything. Do you know what I mean? He can, I mean, I mean, like, he used to go around to people's gaffes and press control, alt, and delete. <laughs> <laughs> That's so dumb, <laughs> but yeah, like nowadays, like um, fucking Tom Machine there in the corner, fucking yeah. Jamie from Joe Rogan job, is it? Ah. Not far off it. <laughs> when we started this, that's basically the role he fell into, and like we we, we never said like Thomas, would you, would you mind doing the Jamie role? He just kind of like fucking Jamie, man. Did it. Jeez, man, so I'll be up a, 
hands free, you know, no problem. Tom Machine Man, if you want to be, if you want to be my Jamie, I'll be a long lost pal. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, man, I, I could do with a tech bod like yourself just to fucking take the load off because. Oh, I mean, like, it's hard well, I'm getting fuck all in return. And, you know, I've got I've got the ex wife there going, What are you doing with your time all day? Uh, and and say, so, You need to get a proper job. I'm, like, I'm not getting a fucking proper job. I'm 38 years old, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but like, uh, yeah, Corona times, isn't it? See, for me, yeah. if, I, if, I, if I just had someone knocking out, because for me, yeah, I've, with the Hardy book, for example, can I give that a plug on your podcast? Yeah, yeah please. Plug it all, man. Plug it all. Yeah, the Hardy book. Basically, it, it's uh, I'm gonna put it on its own its own podcast, but it's currently up on the Hardy Books podcast, and it's also on Maloney's Digest, the the YouTube channel I have. Mm. There's a playlist for it, but um, I'm using Logic. There's a lot of people. I mean, without getting too technical and boring, because a lot of people are like, "Why are they talking about fucking digital audio workstations and shit?" But um, it's basically yeah, Logic is. I, I don't mind it. I think it's, uh, you know, I, I got audacity there. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was like, I'm going back to logic, but it's a lot of trial and error. And, and obviously I'm getting fast with, with cutting and you, you just learn as you go. But uh, it's just basically balancing having kids and other priorities on top of that at the moment. It's just, yeah, it's hard work, but um, I'm really excited about, about that. I want to take, the plan is to get it turned into a, into an actual physical book. So people can go, oh, I went to Easton's and bought you a Hardy book. Oh, cool, oh, cool. Cool, did you get that? And the, yeah, class got a Christmas. Oh, cool. You know what I mean? It, 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 it's good as well. Like, I, I've listened to the audiobook and it's spot on. I wouldn't it mind your physical copy. But no, it, it is really well. We were on the phone the other day and we were having a chat about it. A nice and, whole chat the other day. Yeah, we could have done the whole podcast. Could have done. Could have, oh, should have. Our 10 minute phone call turned into an hour. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, fucking, it, it's brilliant. Um, and you don't even know how you're going to finish it. You're just going to keep at it for a while. Yeah, I think I think, I think it will be like war and peace at the end of it. It will just be like a look like a, a yellow pages phone book full of <laughs> mad shit. Yeah, there'll be, yeah, there'll be lads in leaving certain about fifteen years going. No, if you want, you're doing the you're doing the Hardy book for for leaving cert, and they'll be like, oh, class. <laughs> to talk about Mitzi's and Sky Boys. No, with, with, with the leave and search. Well, interested in keep private peaceful in there, Yeah, some <laughs> of the stuff they, they give you to do in the leave and search is just awful. And I wonder, like, the poor otter, like, everyone is going to end up, like, just disliking them because, you know, you've been given this book. It makes no sense to you. You've, you've no choice on it. And they're just, all right, go at it now, lads. Yeah, I mean, like, it, depend, it depends on. Uh, I mean, some 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 leaving certs had like to kill a mockingbird or catch her in the eye. You know, interesting, you know, compelling books. Uh, and then other people just had like, I don't know, I can't really remember. There was there's a bit which uh, which I've written, but I, I wrote it a couple of years ago. It's basically Eddie taking the leaving cert and talking about what he was doing in the leaving cert. It was like how he was, it was Rosen. <laughs> This, with this one, like I heard a lot of people in my ear got caught out with at that time because, you know, we were doing Hamlet in, in English, but there was there's a, I don't know if it's a, if it's a play or a book, but it's basically or both, but it's called uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, but like apparently a lot of people got caught out, and they answered, the questions on that, thinking it was talk they were talking about Hamlet. So I was talking about, so I basically took it in the direction of being that classic person answering the question wrong, but instead of it being like, <laughs> instead of it being like on point with, with Hamlet, it was basically, I, Eddie makes up a story about um, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern being two hard dudes who are in the Navy SEALs. They go off to fight Pol Pot and the commie Nazis of Cambodia and end up fighting the, the Predator Nazis. and Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually robbed that from McBain and Simpsons. Take this, you call me Nazis. <laughs> I love that. Oh, great! Uh, brilliant. brilliant. Gee, you, that from you, you're a guy. Oh, mate, you know, you know the crack. Yeah, and you know, you, you, you keep at it. Like I think yesterday you were doing a stream, or was it the night before? Uh, you have the Hardy book being done, and you're doing um your own podcast, and then you're doing other people's ones as well. 
Yeah, I did uh, Cheap Heat Productions. I was trying to get us to do a triple threat match there yesterday. I just went on a big rant about COVID and, and, and the global response to it. And I was a bit like, I said, look, look, Morris, mate, if I was to put it, if I was to crystallise it, it's quasi-bollocks. So, um, yeah, I'll ruffle a few feathers. Luke yeah. O'Neill. Yeah, but uh, that's the fucking care for no boys, you know what I mean? I mean, what, what are you trying to get out of it? Like, what, what are you trying to do with it from here on? Which, the Hardy book? I guess everything you're doing. Like, you... The show isn't happening, but you're you're keeping the dream alive with the YouTube and the podcast and the Hardy book. Yeah, you see, I, I, everything's like. I mean, I'm not the only one who who's just like, yeah, man. I was I was doing gigs and I was uh, like, the gigs were starting to roll in, and I I, I enjoyed just going back to playing live music because for me, music was always something that I that I always that was like my the, the thing I wanted to do first. But sometimes my, the problem is with me. The, you know, you, you can want something so badly that you're too afraid to take the step. And with music, I, I kind of, I suppose there's something to, like my town growing up, anyone who was into music was kind of, it wasn't really like a musical town compared to what it is today. There's back in the day, like, you you know, you, it was just lads with singing Garth Brooks covers and, and that kind of thing. But there was no young people really playing music. And if they did, it was kind of like something that they did. But in the last 15 years... On the water. <laughs> yeah, this is so, so, it's got awful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but no, no. I, in recent years, I just I just got over the fear of playing music. And, and then I realised, like, if I'm doing live comedy, like, you're up there on your wits. And if, and if, you're, if you're bombing on stage and, or if, you, if you, you, know, you can't remember your material, like, you're, you're up there and you're, you've got split seconds to conjure something up to bide your time to entertain the crowd. Whereas, like, if you're playing music and you and you mess mess up a couple of lyrics up, you just keep playing a few bars of music and then jump back into it. It's actually mm. a lot easier. Um, and so I was doing that, but yeah, man, everything like I mean, all my all my be- uh, eggs were pretty much in the in the entertainment industry basket, whether that be music, comedy, acting, writing. So for 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 now, like we're doing the the, the podcast, it's kind of and, and writing the book, it. it you know, in the live streams on YouTube, it's a nice way of kind of scratching that creative itch. Yeah. And yeah, and the, th- the nice thing is as well is like it's it's not it's not something that I'm you know when you're writing with me, I have this weird thing where if it becomes a job, I'm like oh. Whereas I'm doing this off for my own, it's a labor of love. Whereas like even if if, if like R two goes, oh you got to do series five. I would be better off writing series five before even approaching them with five episodes written that I've done it for my own amusement. Because as soon as, as soon as you're getting like script notes back and rewrites, it, you know, it, it becomes a bit more laborious. But uh, I think what I, what I'm enjoyed at the moment about doing my own stuff is, is I'm doing it for my own entertainment. And if I'm entertained, if I'm entertained, then, you know, hopefully it's a good barometer of what people want to hear. Yeah, I guess in a way it's real because it's not being put through the hands of many people. It's just you know yourself and mm. you, your own create creativity, and that, that that's one thing that's going very well for I suppose all of you. Is like Owen's doing his own things. Mm. Owen Colgan, uh, Three Books Left Lads. They're they're doing bits. They started a podcast now as well. Yeah, uh, had Cowboy call us a bit of competition there. So them's fighting words, Cowboy. Oh, but, Cowboy uh, Laughing Job. But the, yeah, the thing is, he's unreal. I, I, yeah, the lads, he's but, a beast. Yeah, you know, but I tell you the difference between Cowboy and and the rest of us, right? We were doing we were doing a couple of a couple of live gigs there about two or three years ago, and you know the other lads, you know they've been they've been in the in the business for ten over ten years now. Whereas mm-hmm. Stevie would come in, do a few episodes, and then like you know you'd see him around town and whatnot. And then when he, I think when he came to Vicar Street, we're like, do you want to come in for the crack and? Then when he just seen the the crack we were having, he got it like Stevie is the kind of lad he'd take any job. And he's he's got a great work ethic, and when he just seen like the 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 crack that was being bestowed upon us, uh, that was just being taken for granted, he was like, "Fuck me, boys! What are you complaining about? Shit, this is fucking great crack." And then from that point, you know, Stevie was just like, he got a, he got a taste for it, and and he's applying that work ethic from his normal job into the entertainment world and, and fair play to him. Like I had a lot of people saying to me, oh, what do you think about the, is it not a bit cheeky that the 
they started three books left. And I was like, no, not at all, man. I mean, those lads, you know, they want to, they, they miss, you know, they're, they're at the mercy of other people. So for them, I, I could totally agree that, yeah, they, they should go off and do their own thing and take it in their own direction. And, you know, uh, you know, Sam and Pete and, and Stephen, you know, they'd be waiting for, for myself and the other lads to, to get something going. So I'm glad that I'm glad it's working out for them. And the, their live show is a good man. They're like a, it's like a whole kind of, it's just like a whole night of entertainment from music to comedy. I can't and, wait to go to one. Yeah, we said we we're going to go to one when uh, I COVID. absolutely cannot wait. This is the, the thing, lads. Like, you know, it's when, when when's it going to happen? You know, when, when can we fucking go out? I mean, uh, like, yeah, I'm on second, bear with me now. Um, That's one hell yeah. of a profile picture. Which one's that? Like, your, your profile picture, what was it? It was like a, a honey badger or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bad bastards, man. Hard, hard dudes. Mm. Um, yeah, but um, I, I, I just, man, I haven't really played much music lately because without an audience to perform for, it's like, it's grand playing for yourself, but oh, I haven't got the time and and uh, I really enjoy playing live gigs. It's a great buzz. But uh, the Hardy book, uh, the, the three books left gigs, they're good crack. Chris Tordoff, man, when he was doing the, 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 the Viper shows a couple of years ago, they, they were funny. You know, and then when we were doing our own shows, the Hardy Book shows, and then we had a, a stage show, like we were we were ready to roll, and yeah, um, it, the, the entertainment business it's a it's a very it's it's it's, it's an it's an industry that I wouldn't recommend to those who can't handle rejection well, because it's uh it's basically it's it's it's. It's cliche to say it, but it's the ups and downs, and there's, and it comes with many of them. And you know, you're you 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 have peers who they're behind you for a good bit. Next thing they just fucking shoot out in front, and you might pass them out. Next thing they're just gone. You know, it's like if you overthink it, you can it can send you a bit a bit nuts. So I think anyone who's setting out to do anything, whether it be comedy, music, just the the best thing is to do is not to compare yourself to others, and just focus on on yourself and enjoy what you're doing and if you're not if you like it's not a, and it's not about money either but unfortunately a lot of aspects of the business are about you know whether if you're doing live gigs about how many how many tickets you're going to sell can you replicate mm. the same show you know uh, the, the thing is with entertainment it's a merge it's a merge it's a merger of two very different types of people you have the the, the pie chart business people who are looking at numbers and profits and then you also have creatives who just want to create and be and enjoy what they do, enjoy the craft of their business. And sometimes the two of them are it's like a, it's like a hot and cold front mixing. Did they create the old cumulonimbus mm. shitstorm? <laughs> and I mean, fair play to people who can dodge the first person, you know, if they can just keep it, keep going. Because I think you get warned of it. Like if, if someone can make it easier, what's, what's the cost? Like if you if you have a third party come in and offer you this that and the other, how's it going to affect you down the line? Like, are they going to be taking like half half the money? Are they going to be taking blah blah blah? Do they want well, to manage the show? Blah blah blah. Well, you know, a lot of um, Rolling Stones, man, they got shafted for years. They didn't see a penny, uh, and there was a lot of a lot of like Motown artists, and um, you know, they would just that the, you know record agent record labels would just fleece them give them nothing so the, the, the it's um you know there's a, there's a lot of predatory aspects to, to the entertainment world as well i mean it's sh it's show business it's a business at the end of the day and um there's a lot you know it tracks people who are after you know large quantities of money and they'll pretty much fuck over anyone to get there you know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of the, it uh the, the, the industry does it does certainly create the or it does attract the more negative types of uh, of humanity to it. So yeah. the same as finance, you know, and any, any anywhere where there's anywhere that where there's money and power to be to be garnered out of something, you know, it'll attract wrong ends. Yeah, it's not what you want. No, that's uh... be cute, be cute lads. When you get out there, you know what I mean. Be cute. Yeah, you're yeah. starting off now with the podcast, and who knows where it'll end up, man. I'll be beating RT now fairly soon. 
<laughs> Actually, we had conversation there, and like, so what you were saying to me, like, geez, what does it take to actually to be better than RT? Like, what would you actually have to do to one day be better than RT? Not, not much uh, was the answer. Not much. I, I think, a, I think a, a lad with a phone, <laughs> any lad. Yeah. Mm. No, no. Um. Well, but I mean, if you, it, it, it's a good it question. Take a lot. But when you think about it, look look at people who are now, you know, to, to who like it's funny because I kind of missed the boat on this a bit. I remember when when Owen and Chris were doing their own thing on on the internet, like they had they both had their own pages, and I had the I thought, all right, well if those lads are doing their own thing, I'll I'll keep the Hardy Books page, and uh, yeah, that was that was unceremoniously taken away a couple of years ago. And so for me, then I was like left trying to build the Eddie Durkin one. And at that stage, Facebook could, you know, Facebook, if you want, if you want followers, it'll cost you. And for me, like, I kind of, I should have got on the buzz with getting the Eddie Durkin thing going, but. That um, word is, what was it? Steve-O told us he put something like 15 grand into it. And then they still took him down. Oh, Steve-O Timothy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he put a total of fifteen grand in over his entire like comedy career, and they still took him down. They I think twice. Shadow banned well, him, right? Yeah, yeah. They they, they well, took down his. Facebook they, did. Yeah, yeah. They removed his page for Sorry, some what, kind of second. joke he made. I'm just doing a podcast. I know. I've got to hit the road down a minute. Um. Uh, sorry about that. Um. Sorry. Um. So who shadow? Why did he get shadow banned? made a joke or something on one of his videos and I guess they didn't like it so they you know the way his videos are kind of very ironic not him is a big yeah, yeah, joke yeah. You makes know, a lot of disabled jokes because he's in a wheelchair yeah. or yeah. stuff like that you know and so people that's are like reported by shite crack merchants basically yeah yeah Pretty also much. didn't he get raided by the, the fucking guards have enough because he he, yeah. he had a guard he had like a vest of one of theirs he had a guard a vest and around is it two or three cards Kate? Two or three wow. cars came around seven or eight guards. Two cars because, for a guy in a wheelchair. Nerdy, my bad. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, what, what was he going to do with the vest? I mean, I think it's legal. Vest? To I'm pretty oh, sure it's legal. Right. To I don't know yeah, why. It's, it's, it's like it's a, it's illegal to to unlawfully impersonate an officer, that kind of thing. Something yeah, like but, that, yeah. Oh, yeah, because he was doing yeah. this, this character of being a guard. I don't know. That, that doesn't really make sense. Yeah. I think yeah. it was like, oh, that's we ha- we have a fucking complaint here about your man Steve. You know him, the one at Farmer Michael. We will head down to his gaff now. And we'll have a peek. We'll break up his house with pickaxe handles. Yeah, he said there's about eight, eight, eight people, and he was like, a lot of them were there just for a gawk, you know, just take a look. Yeah, yeah it's a fun. Uh, it's um, man, fifteen grand. I haven't put a penny into it, like into anything. Maybe we I tried should... to put twenty into Google Ads once, and uh, nearly ripped a hundred out of our hands. They're 20, awful. 20, 20 euro. Yeah, Google, uh, like just to test it for our first time, Google ads are terrible. And the whole time I'm like, how the fuck could you charge me 100 for like a 20 equivalent? And they're like, oh, well, you didn't do it at the start. Of, oh, you didn't do it at the start of the month. So we have to make up for the rest of it. Now, that didn't make a lot of sense to me. But So uh, you, 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 fuck off. Sorry, I've got, I've got me make, ringing me nonstop. I'd love to ring him back. Um, but, um, yeah, basically, uh, you you were saying the other day, like you put in, how much did you put in? Was a hundred quid you put in, and you got like four subscribers out of it or something? Yeah, that was it. <laughs> it, it was on. It was on. You know, you know the new uh, Call of Duty. What was it? Sorry. You know the new Call of Duty. It's the Black Ops one or the yeah, yeah. Black Ops yeah. Cold War. We we had uh, I guess he's kind of the villain, Adler Russell Adler. We had him on. Oh yeah, um, you're saying, yeah, and. Mm. We're like, all right, we'll try to get this boosted while, while it's like rele- relevant. We got like, in fairness, we did get about 800 views out of it, but four subscribe, 800 views, 400, or 800 views, four subscribers, 100 quid. Fuck that. <laughs> you know, yeah. there's better ways. Like, we, we, we got more yesterday than we did from that ad campaign. Mm-hmm. But you know, it, I, I think it, it also depends on what it is you're, you're selling. Let's mm-hmm. say if you're on YouTube and you're trying to sell, you're already competing against people who have. Uh, bigger channels, you know. Yeah. It's uh, whereas, like, if you're selling, I don't know, a new, a new you know, a, a business like a a real world business, like let's say you got a, a a range of hoodies. I have like some cool pockets. I don't know, for example, 
Um, and then, you know, you put, put that ad up. What was, what was the ad like? What was, was it like a, an ad? It was like just a, like, you're on YouTube um, in the, like the next like couple of video, like a line, a couple of videos on the line down. We're the first one that pops up. So it has like a little yellow mark on it. Yeah. Um, to say it's an ad uh, or a recommended ad towards the person. Because I have seen uh, ads on YouTube where it could be like a cartoon someone's made and they basically, they put money into the cartoon, but it's, it's comes up as an advert. Mm-hmm. I've seen that. Uh, or like uh, some, some recent one I saw was this, this, this girl who was had like an ASMR sleepy time. She's like, I will help you go to sleep. And I'm like, how much no. is she getting? How much is she They're paying for that? Weird, those videos. I get those oh, as well. Especially at night, as well. they'll be like, Are you trying to go to sleep? I'm like, Yeah, I am. And then fuck off. Yeah, yeah stop there, arousing me. <laughs> sitting there at four o'clock in the morning last night and all these sleep videos coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the, the, the the happening, like, sometimes if, if I, you know, if I'm putting the kids to bed, I'll, uh, I'll stick on like Sound of the Ocean. And there's one yeah. which is, man, it's got about 38 million views. It's just like a moon and sound of a beach just looped over and over again with some like yeah. generic celestial soundtrack. And you're like, wow, 30, what, what's the numbers on that, man? I think 38 million views. Is it, is it five grand per million? No, I, can't, well, I can't really remember. It depends you where like your views are from. You have like a cost per uh, thousand. And that can vary often, so it really depends. Yeah, it's it's a because you imagine like, yeah, because they get that off AdSense, wouldn't they? Mm. Yeah, yeah. But also depends how many ads they have, because if they have like three ads in a video, one at the start, middle, and end. Yeah, you know, like three times as much as the first one. Yeah, yeah, you know that, that's something that really annoys me. You know, like uh, you'll, you'll be watching a video and they've just put like double ad in the beginning, double ad in the middle. And, and it's just like, for me, I'll, I'll, you know, I obviously want to try and make some few quid, um, but I'll just put like ads at the beginning. I want like, cause I, I get personally annoyed by them. You know, if you're, I, you're I think to... keep them at the end as well, just cause someone's just going to be getting like the little, little bit of it at the end before they go click on the something else, which helps you along. It's like a but, couple of seconds and it helps you in the end. Well, that's if people are watching your videos all the way to the end. I mean, sometimes I look at the video and uh, uh, analytics for mine. It's like people just come, people are watching for like seven minutes. And it's like the, the video might be about 40 minutes. But, it, you know, I, I think I remember my, my, my sister told me, um, that's Joseph, I'm taking that into him. Um, my, my sister told me, um, a, friend, a friend of hers work, works in Facebook, and she said that basically online now, you ha- you're competing against. You have to grab someone's attention in the length of a th- length of a thumb. Mm. So that's how much time you have to like just, you know, grip someone's attention. It's like it's like you know we talk about the adverts. Like if you see an advert for like there's a film by Warner Brothers coming up, it doesn't say what the movie is, and you have no idea what's going on. It's like skip. <laughs> it's like yeah, <laughs> with everything really. Like there's very few ads. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, but there's a couple I've watched the first 10 seconds and then skip because they lose me at some point you see that's it I mean that's obviously that's longer than a thumb but like, like, like the Alec Baldwin uh, eToro ad is funny so I watched that one but that, yeah. that, I've watched that once Adam Baldwin is he is he reprising his role from Glengarry Glen Ross oh he's a fucking know. salesman didn't ah. he have his thing recently like his, his wife was like pretending to be Latino is he still married to Kim Bassinger or was that over a long time ago? I honestly wouldn't know. I, I, I barely know anything about the guy. Oh, Tanya. I'll, I'll ask the ex missus. Tanya. She don't answer. <laughs> Story <laughs> of my wife. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, it's a funny, funny old world. Funny old, funny old world trying to start off. It's like for me, it's weird because it's like I'm starting off from, from, from square one. But uh, at least what's mine is me fucking all, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but there must be some kind of, you know, like there must be some sort of exponential uh, stage where, where things start growing. Like, let's say, you know, it's like a snowball effect where it's very difficult to get, you know, past, let's say, 500 subscribers. And then it's a good, the next milestone's 1,000. And then it's... Um, is it the first 1,000 harder than the next 10,000? The first thousand is harder than the next ten thousand. They say. 
Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah, but yeah. you know, I, I suppose it's all about branding. I mean, like, like say, like Tordoff is very, very successful with his, with his, his channel because it is the Viper Higgins. Mm. Whereas for mine was called Maloney's Digest, and it's like, what the hell is that? It's like a fucking biscuit or something, an Irish biscuit. You know, <laughs> some sort yeah. of like high high fiber diet channel. Yeah, uh, but like if, you know, if you look up Eddie Durkin, like, are you going to come up? Or is yeah. a different video going to come up? I was actually thinking today, maybe I should just do an Eddie Durkin channel and then just be in character the whole time and, and just, yeah, just do that. I mean, like, there's, there's, there's no reason why I can't have a couple of different channels on the go. You know again, you're kind of spreading yourself. Sorry? You know what's super off-putting? Finding out oh. you had an English accent. <laughs> That was that was such a weird thing. Like the first time I found your channel, I was like, "What?" Because like, yeah, you like the I, thickest accent on the Hardy books. Do you know what? I'll, t- I'll tell you something funny about that chair, right? Um, years ago, we did this thing in UCD where we went to UCD and we were talking in front of maybe like six, seven hundred students one 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 night, and uh, and I just started talking like this with my own accent. I was like, "Yeah, if we're gonna miss having the boys on the town." Having a crack there, fucking few looseners and you know, Scorpio on the boys. But like I talked like this, and everyone just went. And I was like, oh, this is awkward. I'm only joking, man. That's how I really speak. <laughs> 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 yeah, that, that was a that was a bit. But the thing is, look at biologically, you know what I mean? Irish parents. Yeah. Go on. I, I, my sister did a DNA test actually recently, uh, a couple of years ago. We have uh, apparently in our in our DNA we have twenty percent Scandinavian, eight percent English, uh, and the rest of it is is Connacht, and two percent unknown. Ooh, bit of mystery. Ooh, uh, like maybe mystery. some Napa or something there. <laughs> some some Neanderthal genes. <laughs> uh, that's actually yeah. a really really weird thing. Like uh, certain people have like Neanderthal in them, you know. Mm. I got you, actually funny funny to say that I was, I was in a I was in a health store come smoothie shop that my mate was kind of co-running in, in Stockholm a couple of years ago and this this fucking dude comes in and he, he stops he looks at me and goes wow a real Neanderthal I was like what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about man no but you have the traits in your I was like yeah 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 and what are you fucking <laughs> I don't know what I said it was just a bit like you got a fucking slap. <laughs> Fuck all. You should yeah. have got a bit of bummishment. Bummishment. <laughs> Jeez. Nice. Yeah. Nice. But, um, yeah. Thomas liked that one. Fair play to him. Yeah. What, um, oh, fuck. <laughs> I, I know you have to head off soon, Martin, but um, what is it? Uh, if, if people want to check you out, where can they find you? Uh, thanks very much for asking. Yeah, so I'm, I'm on Instagram at Maloney101. Uh, there's the Eddie Durkin page on Facebook, which I haven't really used that much lately, and uh, Maloney's Digest on YouTube, and the Hardy Books podcast, which is available on most of the podcast platforms Spotify, iTunes. I don't know if it's on Acast, it's on Podbean, apparently. Which do you use to, uh, to publish it? Anchor? Sp- Spreaker. Right. I did get an average of 40 quid a month from those boys, but then I have to pay them. So it's like, ah. right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We, we use Anchor because it's free. <laughs> and they put you on Spotify oh, really? straight away. Yeah. Mm. Know, man. But you don't, you but don't get paid for it though in Ireland. It's only the US that pay you. You won't get paid oh, really? by them, but if you do the sponsors separately, you know, like we, we had this friend and they, they were like, oh, I don't know what to do because, you know, you can make money off of it, but like we can't do it in Ireland. So what's the point in doing the ad reads? I said, you ever consider it just just putting the ad read in separately? And my mind is blown. Like, why not just do like fucking digestive biscuits, mad crack, ten percent off with code Marcin, you know, yeah. like at the start of your yolk instead of getting yeah, like yeah, like Bill Burr. To Bill Burr's ones, like what is it? Dallas Shave Club, you know, and uh, he, he's got his he's got his uh, like it'd be nice to get some sponsors, but at the moment, like I'm. At, I don't know. I mean, like, I think I'll probably get about 15, a thousand to about 1500. Like, no one knows about it, really. Do you know what I mean? I think the only bit of mainstream coverage I ever got was from Joe.ie. And I was, I was second to Joe Rogan in, in the overall Irish 
uh, podcast charts. And I fucking asked Owen. I said, Owen, can you share it? He's like, no, I've already put up enough posts. I was like, that was my, that was my shot at getting the number one shot. But um, For, yeah, I, I think what, what I'm going to, I think if I do the Hardy book separately and I have about like maybe 15 parts up there and then just leave it up there then and uh, you know, get some, I'll probably have to like just pay, pay someone who does PR, get on a few chat shows and just be like, yeah, I've got a show out, mate. Yeah, it's Hardy book. Yeah, based you, on make it Thomas, you make it Thomas a shout. He's, he's an expert at that kind of stuff. Oh uh, yeah, well, uh, Thomas um, Jerry's got my number there, lads. Give me, give me, give me a shout there, mate. And yeah, I mean, you're also doing marketing yourself, Jerry. I think that the, these are, if you're going in, like the, the world has changed dramatically since, let's say, when I was in college. You know, you're talking nearly. It won't be long. Won't be too far off twenty years now, and the whole the whole world has just changed. I mean, like a lot of people are making money just from being influencers you know they get free shit sent to them and you know you, you've got people who are like you know the kardashians or you know the only way is essex people that they'll just get like 20 grand to write a tweet yeah talk about soft money yeah look it's it's a weird world we live in but hopefully at some point we'll get the hardy books back and it'll be back normality men will be men sheep will be sheep and we'll all be happy exactly uh, so <laughs> All right, so um, if you got this far in a video or the audio version, fair play to you. And uh, I guess most importantly, take it handy and stay away from yourself. <laughs> Top of the morning, lads and ladies. Support for the Awful Irish podcast is now brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's global waste grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels, and you're no longer lead the look of the Irish with the ladies. Manscaped just launched in Ireland. We've gone years without using the right tools for the job. You can now be one of the first men in Ireland to experience their life-changing products. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code IRISHPOD at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code IRISHPOD.